So this is my Q&A that I posted on Instagram. So today is going to be focused around nutrition. Um, I do find that that is one of the more difficult sides of fitness, whether your goals, fat loss, muscle gain, maintenance, anything, even fat get anything really. Um, it's something that people struggle with quite a lot and there's quite a lot of myths that go around. Um, and it's very difficult to determine what's actually true and what's not. So I have about seven questions. So one of the things that is my biggest pet peeve, I think, is this question. Should I be substituting white bread, white pasta for brown bread, brown pasta? Is that going to help me with weight loss? <laughs> Short answer, no. So to lose fat, which the majority of people, that's what people mean by weight loss, it is all based on a caloric deficit. But essentially, you need to be having a bigger calorie expenditure in comparison to what you are eating. What you are eating in terms of the calories for fat loss has got nothing to do with whether it is white bread, brown bread, because actually the calorie content is not that different between a slice of white bread and a slice of brown bread. Obviously, yes, it'll differ per brand, but the ones that I did have a quick look at, um, they are the same. But the fact of the matter is, if you want to do it for health reasons, so you want to have more, obviously, whole grains, more fiber, yeah, that's why brown bread is good for you. Brown pasta can be good for you if you want to look at the health aspect. But if we're answering the specific question of does it help for weight loss slash fat loss, no, it doesn't, it has no difference. You could literally eat 1500 calories of chips, pizza, whatever, and you have the potential to still drop fat if you are burning plenty of calories throughout that, whether that's from being in a caloric deficit based on your BMR, which is something I'll go through in a second, or whether it's through training. Very misconstrued concept that you have to have brown bread, white bread makes you fat. That's my biggest pet peeve, so thank you for that question. So what I mentioned was BMR. So if you were in a coma for 24 hours, you would still burn calories. Obviously you will be breathing, your heart will be working, your brain will be working, you've got muscles that control obviously your blood flow, they obviously are going to do something, they're still a muscle. Mine, if I'm not exercising, not doing anything, is around 1450, a few different equations. Um, I personally use one called Mifflin St. Jour. I found that that works quite well in comparison to what all of my clients for myself. There are some occasions where I've just made sure and double checked and cross referenced with other equations um, and they have actually come up with maybe plus or minus 50 um, around the same level of calories for different types of people. It's very, very independent on all of that, but also what your actual goal is. So if your goal is just fat loss. The amount that you eat is obviously dependent on all of that and what you would work out that. If anybody wants me to work that out for them following this video, uh, give me a message. I'll happily work it out for you. Definitely no right or wrong answer to that. Following on from this, we've obviously talked a lot about calories, but one of the other questions are, uh, what on earth are macros? <laughs> So macros is a term that is short for macronutrients and this essentially refers to the content of your food. So protein, carbohydrates and fats. Yes, they can be broken down a little bit further but we're just gonna stick around those three main food areas. Macronutrients, or I'm gonna follow on calling the, call the macros, make up your calories. So in one gram of protein and one gram of carb, so individually there's four calories per one gram protein per one gram carb, but there is nine calories per one gram of fat. If you are making up your calories, at, we'll use that 1500 term again. A portion of that, of those calories, will be protein, a portion will be carbs, and a portion will be fats. And one of the questions was, how much protein should I have a day? This is actually based very similarly around your current weight, so it does fluctuate. For muscle maintenance or muscle growth, having between 0.8 and 1.2 grams of protein times your body weight in pounds. Protein's main role in the body is for cell regeneration, so creating new cells. Obviously, through muscle growth, you can imagine why you would need to do that. You obviously need to grow in size, you need more cells. But another thing is for injury. It does also help for immune system, which 
at the current time with COVID-19 going on is very beneficial. But it also has many digestive benefits. So protein takes longer to digest than carbs and fats. So it's very good to incorporate throughout the day to curb certain cravings that you might have um, or bigger portions that you might tend to go for. So if you have a higher protein content in your day, you're less likely to overeat if that's a problem that you have um, or kind of have your lunch and then an hour later be like, I'm actually quite hungry. With protein, like I said, if you weighed 150 pounds, if you take it from an average point, you would have 150 grams of protein. This number can differ dependent on your body composition. And by that, I mean the makeup of your muscle versus fat. If you're quite high in body fat, your weight's obviously going to be a little bit higher than others. So if you weigh 300 pounds, we'll say, 300 grams of protein is pretty intense amount. So you'd kind of base it off your lean muscle mass by taking away your body fat percentage after working that out through either skin calipers or um, there's different methods, there's certain scales that can do it. It's not 100% accurate, but that's a, a rabbit hole we won't go down for now. Again, if anybody would like me to work out certain things, let me know. If you are someone that struggles with getting a lot of protein in, which leads me on very nicely to another question, is how to reach your protein levels. Because I find with the majority of my clients, it's the hardest thing for people to hit. For me, it is. One of the other questions was how to hit it whilst being vegetarian. I am vegetarian, if no one knows. I, am, I have been since I was 14, so we're rolling on 10 years this year, I think. But I am also lactose intolerant, so I do largely have to kind of have um, a somewhat vegan diet or a lactose-free diet. I have to just be careful about certain things that I have. But vegetarian, to be able to get your protein in, one of the biggest tips that I can advise to someone is actually not the content that you have, but the timing of your meals. So the majority of people don't really have a heck of a lot for breakfast. People normally have it in either their lunch or mainly in their tea. So if you're kind of leaving all of your protein to your last meal of the day, you are sure as hell gonna find it very difficult to actually get it in without feeling sick, um, without actually finishing your meal maybe. Obviously, common sense, if you split it nice and evenly throughout the day, uh, it's gonna make it so much easier to actually get it in, but it's also important for just digestion in general. When you are looking at protein, there's certain things that say you should have the most protein after a workout, which isn't necessarily true. If you make sure that you kind of have a continuous peak of protein throughout the day, rather than having no protein for breakfast, a little bit for lunch, and then ooh, right up here for tea, if you kind of go, I'll have some for breakfast, and it'll go down a bit, but then you have lunch, it'll go down a bit, and then you have tea, and then you go and then obviously drop whilst you're asleep. You can imagine that's obviously a much better way for your body to process it. Making sure that you actually get it in at breakfast, I would say is one of the biggest pieces of advice I can have for protein. Different foods obviously have different levels of protein in. So I usually advise things like Greek yogurt. Some be careful with because if you put Greek style yogurt, they're not the best, they're a little bit higher in sugar um, and lower in protein. So if you go for the ones, if you just scan them, have a look at the actual content just to make sure. Eggs obviously are a good one at the same time. Don't fall into the trap of getting protein cereals. I personally don't think they're worth it because you might have a bowl of Cocoa Pops and there's six grams of protein in, but this high protein cereal has eight grams. So technically, yes, it is higher protein in comparison to the average cereal, but it's really not worth it, to be honest, compared to the calories that you actually get. So things, obviously, meat, animal byproducts are one of the biggest things, but vegetarian side, my kind of diet consists of a lot of corn, also cheeses that I can obviously have, but for an all vegetarian. Halloumi is actually really high in protein. Obviously you have to be aware of the fact that if you have a lot of cheese and dairy, your fat levels will go up, but you can obviously just do things to account for this in terms of the percentages of macros that you have versus your calories, all that kind of stuff. If anybody would like me to work out their macros, I will happily do that for them. Nuts can be helpful as a snack to just up that protein a little bit. It's not worth the fat and calories personally to me. Other people would obviously want to instead. Supplements, I obviously would advise if you really, really struggle to get the food side in. However, main priority is trying to get it in via food rather than the supplement first off. 
Baked beans are actually, well beans in general, but beans are actually pretty decent for protein as well. But the majority of the time is just thinking of different ways to incorporate it. For example, if I was having a meal and I would have bangers and mash, normally people would maybe do two or three sausages, decent amount of mash, maybe some peas or something. However, you could obviously swap it up and put a little bit of cheese in your mash potentially. So I actually put parmesan in my mashed potatoes. It tastes fabulous. Most people like cheese. If you don't like cheese, then I'm really sorry. Sausages, I would just be like, right, well, I know I need to get the protein in. How much protein do I need? About five sausages worth. Well, I'm gonna have less mashed potatoes and I'm gonna have more sausages. So the normal way for you to portion it is to have like half carbs, quarter protein, and then like quarter veggies. I personally, as a vegetarian, to get it in, need to swap carbs and protein around and have half protein, quarter carbs, and a quarter of veggies. So that's not ever to everyone's liking, but you kind of got to do what you got to do, but work it around your lifestyle at the same time. You will have to make sacrifices either way. That's kind of the whole point that people, they need to change something because at the minute they're not happy with it. Therefore, something needs to change to be able to get to that point that they want to be at. Sometimes people are resistant to change, that's fine. It's small baby steps. Something will work for one person and not for the other. However, once people have kind of made the change and then become accustomed to that change, that's now their new norm. And then they don't hate it as much or they're not as against it. You just have to think of the little things like, and what's worth the change for you personally um, and what you find is gonna be worth it at the end. From protein, we did talk about supplements a little bit. So protein powders is another question that someone had. My favorite protein powders. I'm weird with protein powder, so I don't know if it's a very good question for me because I personally don't really love protein powders and whey protein powders. I have to have the isolate, if anyone isn't aware. Whey protein isolate is essentially like a cleaner version of the whey protein concentrate powders and they take away the lactose for it. So for me, I can actually digest it. They don't have as much of a range for isolate powders. I normally use my protein because they always have a deal on and I'm not very good at branching out into different brands because I, I know that I like my protein ones. However, I do have a few clients that use different products. I have one client that uses Protein World and I'm pretty sure that they're pancake protein mix is the best and she loves them so that's number one if you want to have some protein pancakes personally i do use my protein they just have such a range like their flavors of whey is honestly ridiculous it's crazy but my protein actually brought out a clear whey isolate which i don't know if anyone has seen but it actually turns into a juice rather than like a milky shake instead and for me, it was an absolute lifesaver. For about three or four of my other clients, the same thing. They they much prefer that to the normal shakes. It's a lot of, like finer powder and you just put it in, same thing, shake it up, leave it for a second to let um, the bubbles dissolve. And it is literally like having, uh, I don't know, Robinson's juice or whatever juice that you have, Vimto. There's still like five different flavors. It is a little tiny bit more expensive because it is quite new. I think they only brought it out at the end of 2019. So the, I think they were just kind of seeing how popular it is but I personally love it. It's um, like one scoop of like 26 grams or whatever it is, is 22 grams of protein, I think off the top of my head. Same as normal macros really. Flavor wise, um, I kind of like all of the ones of the clear way, but when I was having normal protein shakes, I wasn't really a massive fan of chocolate ones. It was just too synthetic for me, I'm not, I don't know. Um, I do like the chocolate mint one, however, I have had that, that was really nice. It's also really nice if you make it into a smoothie, just saying. If you um, blend it, it froths up a lot more. So I actually put protein powder just in with like some skimmed milk and then like whizzed it all up. Oh, that was good because it went really thick. So if you're kind of wanting something that tastes a bit naughty, then that's kind of something that you need to go for. I do also kind of like putting things into different things that's not just a protein shake. So making ice cream out of it i've used my strawberry um protein powder a little bit of greek yogurt into it which obviously helps with the protein and then just froze it um oh that was really good or if you get like the halo top ice cream and just get like a plain one and then put more protein powder into it that'll be even better so yeah there's just a little thing little ways to kind of get it in that's not just with a shake another one i have had brand wise i've tried 
the applied nutrition i think it was a chocolate brownie one not gonna lie that was really good i think that's the only chocolate one that i did really enjoy and they've got an isolate one that is one of the cleanest branded protein powders so that's also a good one to look out for they don't have as much of a range of flavors just kind of the usual like chocolate strawberry vanilla style banana um so they're not very adventurous but if you kind of like those kinds of things then i would give applied nutrition a go out as well one of the other questions which is actually the last question is what tips do you have for not snacking all day if you find that you are a snacker i don't see why that's a bad thing so unless you are finding it really hard to go for things that are bad snacks and high in calorie and it's not leaving you enough for tea and your bigger meals that's not really ideal but if you are a snack i'm personally a snacker but i always will go for things that are low calorie that kind of satisfy the snack craving so one thing that i've kind of been obsessed with over the last few weeks is cherry tomatoes i've been snacking on them constantly i don't know why i've just randomly been really into them but in 50 grams there's like 10 calories so you can not really waste any calories but still have that satisfying like yeah i get the crunchy ones mm, crunchy tomato um it gets that kind of satisfaction of like chewing something something else i'd go for is the popcorn that's also a good one to go for um there's like 80 calories in a bag cucumber celery sticks with cream cheese on it's like soft cheese that you would kind of like philadelphia cheese in like 20 grams there's only like 25 calories and i just put like a really really light because it's quite a intense flavor on the celery oh again the crunch and then a bit of the creaminess really does it for me love that but if you're kind of wanting to go for a sweet style of snack something that i was really surprised by um is rainbow drops so they still sell them surprisingly enough might be a throwback for some people but i personally love them they sell them down the road because they're obviously just like little pieces of um like maize like right corn things i don't know but are like sugary so you'd think that they're really 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 bad but one of like the bigger bags only 118 calories i would save that 120 calories and have that because they're so sweet they're like proper do you over sometimes i'll only have half a bag and that that satisfies me satisfies satisfies me enough for that snack to kind of be like okay like i always like something sweet after my tea and have like a pudding but usually i'll have a bag of rainbow drops there's also you can obviously get like the 10 calorie jellies which are actually four calories in a pot i don't really understand who branded them as 10 cal jellies when they're four doesn't really make sense to me but yeah like the are the heartless ones they're obviously really good i don't find them as filling but you can obviously have like a lot more of them than as many as you want it's kind of a bit of a weird thing to just sit and eat like 10 bots of jelly for 40 calories but if you're into that go for it i'm more of a sweet snack person so i might be a little bit biased but round tree lollies as well so i'm not really much of like an ice lolly person i like i do prefer ice cream however there's like a there's a watermelon and a strawberry um like it's kind of more like sorbet really good so the watermelon one i always go for because they also have about five or six little chocolate chips on them as like the watermelon seeds and they're quite quite strong chocolate so you've obviously got that it lasts a little bit longer because it's obviously an ice lolly and they're only like 61 calories so i would always go for them also um so yeah that is all of my questions i'm super surprised that i got so many so thank you very much because these are obviously just the nutrition ones i've got so many more that are kind of going to split into motivation kind of areas and obviously like fitness side and exercises there will be some questions that i've read however that probably will get their own video but if there's anything that is in this video you kind of want me to continue with and just expand a little bit let me know i'll happily do that it's kind of the first one that i've done properly so do let me know if there's anything that you want me to improve on this isn't going to be the light setup though because i brought a ring light and then broke it after two days so i'm getting a replacement because i don't think it was my fault but i'm kind of just doing a makeshift lamp situation at the present moment so yeah hopefully that'll be a little bit better but that is essentially the end of the video i really appreciate if anybody has listened this far and like i said there'll be more to come so if you want to follow my instagram which is just nicole lorraine b i do also have a facebook page that is nb fitness and therapy you can obviously give that a follow or a like 
that'll be fabulous and and hopefully i'll see you in the next one